Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Campia, and this is Open Mic. At least it's sort of open mic. Now, what happens on open mics normally is uh, we do them on the weekends, and they're live. However, can't do them live right now. As of this recording, and I'm recording this Sunday afternoon, uh, YouTube had some kind of hiccup. And uh, apparently all over the world, like a certain number of creators have not been able to post new videos or do live streaming videos. So I posted or at least got the live event ready and I set the live event early this morning, but then before noon, it went down. Now, what happened was a bunch of you guys were able to get in live questions before YouTube went down. I want to make sure those questions are going to get answered. So while I cannot do a live streaming open mic today, I am going to get to all those questions that got sent in prior to uh, YouTube falling on its face. And we'll, we'll do those. Now, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my weekend. You ready for a sob story? Here's my weekend. Every year, I go and play at the World Series of Poker. Now, the World Series of Poker... Uh, happens for about a month, uh, give or take a little bit. It's about a month long with many different events that happen during the month. Of course, the famous event is the main event, right? That costs $10,000 to buy into that event. There's a bunch of other events as well that are bracelet events. Like if you win those tournaments at the main event, you get a World Series of Poker bracelet. Poker bracelet. That's like, that's diamonds to people who are into poker. I mean, to have a World Series of Poker bracelet, that's kind of like what every hockey player wants to have the Stanley Cup or something. You know what I mean? Anyway, this year, but those are expensive as well. Not all $10,000, but those are expensive. This year, they had this new tournament that they're doing this year that was only $500 to buy into with a guaranteed prize pool of $5 million and a bracelet if you win. So that's the cheapest there's ever been for a bracelet event. So I planned for a long time, I was going to go out to Vegas Friday after I did the John Campus show. I jumped in my car, drove to Vegas to play in the Saturday opening day of the tournament. There were several day ones, whatever. Now, normally when you register for a tournament, you can register up to like an hour or so after the tournament begins. Most people register, you know, just before the tournament starts. And I'm thinking, ah, but I'm going to be smart. I bet there are a lot of people uh, going to be signing up. I don't want to stand in line for hours the day of the tournament. So I'm going to go and register the night before. So I get into Vegas, um, grab a little dinner. Uh, my buddy Mark Ellis was doing a comedy show in Vegas on the same night, so we arranged to, for me to go and watch his show, and he was amazing. He played at the Brad Garrett uh, Comedy Club at the MGM. He was terrific. Anyway, then I go back to the Rio Hotel in Vegas, which is where I was staying, which is where the, they hold the World Series of Poker. I said, ah, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to register tonight for tomorrow's tournament, plenty in advance. I go down to register, and apparently they had almost triple the amount of people they were expecting sign up for this tournament. Last count I heard was that they had over 30,000 people register for the tournament. Long the story, long and short of the story is this. They wouldn't, I couldn't register. It was, they, they stopped the registration. I've never seen that happen for a poker tournament before, ever. I've never seen it happen. Uh, now, granted, I'm not playing 25 poker tournaments a year or anything like that, but I've never seen that happen. So, long and the short is, I ended up driving out to Vegas for no reason whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, so I just spent the day in Vegas, played a little bit of poker at, at the MGM, won a little bit of money playing poker there. I had, I had a nice little time, but it was a total waste of time driving out there and driving back. But, oh, well, that happens. Anyway. You guys didn't turn in here to hear me tell my sob story. Let's get on to the questions that you guys sent in before YouTube went belly up this morning. All right, let's get into it. Blue Ray Billy, I should say. Blu Ray Billy uh, writes in, and he writes, did Godzilla underperform at $49 million opening? We're going to talk about this more in the John Campy show tomorrow, but yup. They were projecting 55, and even when they said projecting 55, we were like, oh, no, it's going to make more than that. It, that that's going to be low. 55 is low. It's going to make more than that. It's going to make like in the 70 range. It made 49. And I'll tell you what, not a popular opinion, but uh, it is what I feel. It got what it deserved. It's not that good of a movie. Giant monster fights were great, but you can make that into a 20-minute YouTube video. Uh, it, as a movie, it was a pretty piss-poor movie in my opinion. That's just me. I know a lot of you guys like it. Rob loves the movie, and that's awesome. I thought it was a pretty piss-poor movie. But yeah, 49 million is underperforming, and we'll talk about that on the John Campbell Show a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, Chris Hamilton writes, Mini Don't Burn... Ch oh, that's like from one of my favorite movies the last bunch of years. That's from The Help. That's Octavia Spencer, uh, <laughs> who plays a character named Minnie. 
and she's great at making fried chicken. And somebody says to her, oh, maybe we can burn the chicken so people don't know that, uh, so, so people won't suspect that you're making it for me, right? And Minnie goes, Minnie, don't burn chicken. It's a great line. I love that movie. Thank you for mentioning. Not, allowed, not enough people talk about the help. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Chris. All right. Noel Nguyen writes, just started watching Chernobyl. Oh, amazing show. What a beautifully depressing show. That's a great way to describe it, man. Beautifully depressing. But so is, I mean, the incident was pretty depressing. Uh, great acting, writing, and the score. I can feel the dread and anxiety. The podcast explaining each episode is fascinating. You know, I haven't listened to the podcast explaining the episodes. I should probably tune into that. Guys, honestly, I know you're hearing everybody talking about it. If you have not started watching Chernobyl on HBO, the miniseries, check it out. It's so riveting. It's so powerful. And I love the way you put it, Noel. It is beautifully depressing. There's no happy ending with Chernobyl. I mean, it, there's, not, there's no, no big joyous celebrations happening. It's, but the way they tell the story is so powerful. Do check it out. Take Noel's suggestion there, guys. Check it out because it's, it's pretty fantastic. All right. Uh, KW Garrett 83 writes, was so excited to rent first man, but then your review spoiled that Armstrong landed on the moon. <laughs> Thanks for ruining the movie, John. I'm kidding. Great film. I liked first man uh, with, uh, Ryan Gosling, good Canadian kid. Uh, Claire Foy, who is of course famous from being in the crown. It's a very, it's a good movie. It's a very good movie. The thing was, I was, it was directed by the same guy who directed uh, La La Land, right? So a lot of people were expecting this subject matter, this cast, this filmmaker, this is going to be an automatic major Oscar buzz film. And while I thought the movie was very good and well worth watching, um, it fell a little short of where I thought it would be. Like, I, I think a lot of us went in including me with really, really high expectations. This is going to be a best picture contender. This is going to be a contender for my top five films of the year. Didn't make my top 10 list. Uh, still a very good film there. Go a Very good film, though. Very solid. And if you haven't checked it out, I, I recommend checking it out. Thanks for sharing that, uh, KW. Okay. Paul uh, Licari writes, Saw Godzilla, rolled my eyes with every human scene. Dude, me too. Like I said, for me... Godzilla works when it's on the monster fights. Unfortunately, 80% of the movie isn't on the monster fights. It's on the human stuff, and their human stuff was awful. Like, straight up awful. And I'm sorry, but 20% of your movie isn't enough to save the movie. Uh, and, and I thought it was pretty bad. Anyway, uh, Ryan Loner writes, I haven't liked a single Disney live action uh, before, but Aladdin finally did it. The whole song w was the instruction. That was a great moment. I'm not going to say where it is because I don't want to spoil anything. But um, I personally do. I Like, really? You didn't like Jungle Book? That's I I because I, I think Jungle Book is straight up amazing. I love Jungle Book. And I thought Cinderella was terrific. I'm not big on Maleficent. I'm not big on Maleficent. I thought, uh, I mean, the acting in it is uh, like uh, Angelina Jolie is fabulous in the movie, but it's not a very good movie in my opinion. So I'm, I'm going to be curious to see how Maleficent 2 goes. But yeah, I, I thought Aladdin was quite enjoyable. It's still, it's a delightful little film. I really liked it. Uh, so I don't know what why a bunch of the critics didn't. I mean, the majority of critics do, but there were a bunch of critics that didn't like it. And I, I, I don't know what they were looking for. But hey, is what it is. I'm glad you liked it, Ryan. Um, okay, Dave Atkins writes, next play in chat, Warframe. Awesome game, Geo. Um, I have been hearing about Warframe. I have never played it. And as we're getting into the summer months, I'm going to start up play in chats again. A lot of times it's going to be me playing online poker, uh, just playing online poker as we chat movies and stuff like that. But I'm going to try some other games too. And maybe Warframe is one I'll have to put on that list, Atkins. All right. Uh, Paul Licario writes, I'm turning 35 this month and I am officially old. Dude, You're I, by today's culture, by the time you turn 30, you're old. I mean, I'm, I'm not 50 and I'm ancient. So, I mean, there you go. Yes, congratulations, Paul, you're officially old. But actually, another way of looking at it is that, you know, 60 is the new 40 these days. I mean, you're looking at guys like, well, Stallone is a freak of nature, but you're looking at guys like George Clooney, Brad Pitt, all that kind of stuff. Like, wait a second. Hey, Google. How old is Brad Pitt? Let's see what Google tells me here. Brad Pitt is 55 years like, old. Like, Brad Pitt's 55. Look at that dude. Look at that dude. So in some ways, 
Yep, you're totally ancient now, Paul. But in other ways, too, you're still just a baby. So, I mean, it all depends on how you decide to look at it. Okay, Dave Atkins writes, if 5G has any hopes of taking off, they need... They need to give unlimited plans. Here in the UK, it's about $75 for 120 gigs. Uh, but me and a lot of others are going to burn through that cap in less than a week. For what? Uh, here's what I, I don't get. What? I don't think I use more than five gigs a month. <clears throat> I don't think I, I use five gigs a month. When I'm at home, I have my phone connected to Wi-Fi. I listen to a lot of streaming podcasts and stuff like that in the car. But I mean... I, I don't understand 120. First of all, nowhere in the U.S. do you get 120 gigs a month for that cheap. Like in the U.S. it's like for 10 gigs a month or for like eight gigs a month or something, 120 gigabyte plan. No, you don't need. I, I What the hell are you using your phone, phone Dave, that you're burned through 120, 120 gigs a month? Like seriously, what are you using it for? I, I don't. I don't understand. Connect to Wi-Fi more. Connect to. I'm telling you right now. In the U.S., if you offered 120 gigs a month plan, people would be losing their minds with excitement. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean that's kind of crazy. Um, I don't know. I mean, look, if they offered a pure unlimited plan, you're probably paying a lot of money. But who knows? Maybe they'll offer something like that. Uh, the Chum Bucket writes, "When are you visiting Galaxy's Edge? Review? Yeah, I'm going in two weeks. Two weeks, I'm going." We've got our hotels booked. We've got our time slot reserved. We're all good. And yes, you know, I'll be talking a lot about Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Dave also writes, least favorite video game genre. I don't know that I have a least favorite genre. Uh, to be honest, because a lot of games can be very appealing. Like I, I like, like I like role-playing games. I like real-time strategy games. I like first-person shooter games. Yeah, I, I guess I'd have to see. You know what games I'm not really big on, although I used to be? a lot when I was a bit younger. I'm not big on the the fight the hand-to-hand -hand fighting games. Like I'm not big on Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or things like that. And while I love the cutscene movies of Injustice Gods Among Us, I'm actually not all that big on the game. I'm I'd have to say my least favorite game is probably the the one on one hand to hand fighting games. Not that I dislike them, but I, I guess those are my least favorite ones. Um Taff Three Full writes When They See Us, wow, powerful and sad. I haven't watched When They See Us yet. I believe that's Ava Duvernay's a uh, new film about um, the kids who are accused of, of rape. I got to see that, though, because I remember I watched the trailer. I'm like, oh, just watching the trailer, you're like, damn. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I believe it's on Netflix. Um, so I'm going to – I've got a few Netflix things i got to catch up on because I was away this weekend. I didn't have uh, Always Be My Maybe, which I've been dying to see. So Ann and I are probably going to watch that after the basketball game tonight. Go Raptors. Uh, I'll probably go to watch that a little bit later. But I got to watch uh, When They See Us as well, because that looks damn... If you don't know anything about it, go on YouTube and look up When They See Us trailer and tell me you're not intrigued to watch this movie, because it looks really good. All right, Dave Atkins writes, you're about as mysterious to me as a block toilet is to an effing plumber, Memento Al Pacino. Actually, what you're thinking of is Insomnia with Al Pacino. Memento's awesome. Insomnia, though, is my all-time favorite Christopher Nolan film. That includes The Dark Knight. Everybody looks at me, ah, well, first of all, most people have never even heard of Insomnia. Uh, just filled with Oscar-winning talent across the board. Uh, Robin Williams, Al Pacino, Hilary Swank. It's incredible. I believe it's his best film, Like, but most people won't even put it on their top five. Most people haven't even seen it. So good on you, Dave, for quoting me some Insomnia. That's awesome. All right, uh, O Plus 98 writes, recent rumors are saying... Uh, Pattinson Batman might disconnect from Snyder's DCEU Batman. Good idea from Hamada and what uh, what uh, and WB. Well, I mean that's been the question going around for years. There's no credible. By the way, let's be clear. There's no credible source actually saying that, but it is something everybody has been speculating about and wondering about ever since we knew Matt Reeves was going to be doing a Batman film, and that Affleck was out and all that kind of stuff. Will the casting of a new Batman represent? a soft reboot in some way disassociating itself and pretending that the Snyder Batfleck thing didn't exist it's possible I still don't know it's no more likely today than it was yesterday but it's it's certainly a strong possibility would it be a good idea it all depends on how they do it look if they do it and they do it badly then we're all going to say it was a bad idea if they do it and do it brilliantly then we're all going to say it was a good idea but, I mean, the problem is, while Robert Pattinson is definitely, like, Robert Pattinson is older 
than Christian Bale was when Christian Bale became Batman. So he's not some young spring chicken. But at the same time, he's about 10 years younger than Batfleck. So I don't know you can say he's the same guy. I don't know. Maybe you can, but that doesn't seem to make sense. So really, O plus what it's all going to come down to is do they do whatever it is they're doing well? Because if they do it well, we're all going to say whatever it is was a good idea. It's, it all comes down to that. We're going to see the result and then we're going to decide whether we think it was a good idea or not based on the result. If they do it badly, we're going to say it's a bad idea. If they don't do it, but do it badly, we're going to say they should have done it. You know, it, it all comes down to that. So it's it all depends on the idea that Matt Reeves has and then how they execute it. All right, Jay Bling writes, did you cuddle up with Anne to watch Always Be My Maybe? Yet? Nope. Again, I just got back from Vegas like three hours ago. Um, I drove it there Friday night. I drove back out here Sunday morning, so we haven't had a chance to watch it. We were just talking about it before I started recording this. We're probably going to watch it later tonight, so I'm very excited to watch it, though. Uh, Murray Reich writes, did I get the last one yesterday? Murray Reich writes, I never understood the idea of a fan event. Films usually open Thursday night, so why would I want to pay more to see a movie one hour early uh, for a stupid gift? I mean, it all depends. I mean, I'm with you on that personally, but I also at the same time do see the appeal for some people because look, people were losing their minds about seeing Avengers Endgame. You offer a smaller select group of people at a higher ticket price the opportunity to see it one hour earlier than anybody else in the country? Hell, I can see why a lot of people would be excited about that. I can. I can honestly see why a lot of people would be excited about that if that's the sort of thing you're looking for and that's the sort of thing you're into. And the fact that you get a commemorative pin or a commemorative fan poster or something like that, that's just an added little thing. But I think there are a lot of people that you offer that for the next Star Wars movie, I think people would take you up on it. You offer that for the next Marvel film, I think there are going to be people who take you up on it. Look, if there is a demand for something, the market will create something to fill that demand. And if you have a section of the fan base that would completely consume the notion of a slightly earlier version of the movie with a little, with a little commemorative gift or something like that, there's a demand for it. And if there is demand, the market will create something for it. Now, again, I'm with you on that. That's that's not something that necessarily appeals to me, although I'm not going to pretend that I haven't done one or two of these fan events before I have. Uh, but it doesn't really super appeal to me. But I know that there are people it does appeal to. I can sort of see why it would appeal to them. So I'm down with it. I, but again, Murray, you and me can go to the 7 o'clock show like everybody else. But for the people who want to go see it at 545, let them do it and let them have a good time. It's all good. All right, Jay Bling writes, Obviously, we uh, we were never getting the Ant-Man slash Thanos butt moment, but there was a missed opportunity. Giant Man tormenting Thanos. Hey, little guy. Eh, I I don't know that. I'll be on Jay. I'll, I'll be honest with you, brother. That that's that's a little no. That's a little dad joke there. Right? <laughs> I think that's a little bit of a dad joke. I don't know that that would have worked. Uh, guy Volt writes. Jumper is one of my favorite movies and most hate it. Yeah, I was in that movie and I don't like it. I, I'm a little extra in a couple of quick scenes uh, that you, you barely notice me. They just shot it in Toronto and there was a while there where I, I got to go and be an extra in a few movies. Uh, things like, uh, well, uh, the Hulk, the Ed Norton Hulk. Uh, Jumper was one of them. Um, oh, who's the guy? Uh, what's the name of the actor again who played Dwight on The Office? Why am I freezing on his name? The guy who played Dwight Schrute. Anyway, he had a little movie he did called The Rocker. I was an extra in that. Uh, things like that. So I was actually in a couple scenes. Just a little background extra stuff. Nothing big. Um, but even I know that that movie's not very good. Mm. But hey, it had... The mythology of, of Jumper is actually really good. I love the mythology he's built around. I just thought it could have been executed a little bit better. But it has its fans, and I'm glad you're one of them, guy. All right. Ryan Loner writes, uh, finished Lucifer season one, not thrilled with the generic dirty cop plot, but the actors are ace and that cliffhanger is very exciting. Dude, I love that season. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. The dirty cop angle wasn't the strongest thing of season one. And I think when you get into season two and three, you'll notice they learned from that and they just got a lot sharper. I love everybody. If you guys watch the show, you know, I love Lucifer, man. I love this show. I'm glad you're watching it, Ryan. And uh, yeah, I, it just gets better. 
It just gets better as it goes, in my opinion, at any rate. All right, Vrinder Singh sends in a really big super chat. Thank you, Vrinder, man. That's really generous, dude. All right, I've had a great weekend. Yesterday was my youngest son's 10th birthday. Happy birthday to your little guy, man. Uh, got him a Lego Star... Oh, my God. Got him a Lego Star Destroyer, which he loved. I would love it, too. Just, just saying. Just saying. I'd love it, too. Um... Uh, and later on, same day, my team, Liverpool FC, won the Champions League, the elite competition of European football, double celebration. I'll tell you what. So I told you I couldn't get into that tournament. So I, I was at the MGM anyway, because I had gone to see, uh, I'd gone earlier to, to see Mark's thing. So I went back to the MGM and I went and played poker there. And I'll tell you what, the poker room in the MGM is right beside their big sports book. And there are hundreds of people in there. And all of a sudden, we hear massive cheering, and we all look, oh, they're watching the uh, the soccer championship stuff. So there was people going nuts in there watching that. So congratulations. First of all, happy birthday again to your son, Werner. That's really cool. I hope your son enjoys that Star Destroyer that I still don't have. And congrats for your team, Liverpool, winning their championships. I, I'm not going to pretend like I know a lot about soccer. I don't. But I know that's a big deal to a lot of people. So enjoy the celebration, Vrinder. All right. Uh, Hoser Mike Miaz writes, uh, what E3 2019 press conference are you looking forward to and Raptors or Warriors will win game two? I, I honestly, I don't care a lot about E3. I really don't. Look, I'll often watch a lot of the recap videos that come out after E3 out of curiosity, but I'm, I'm honestly, I don't even know what press conferences there are. I don't really care. Um, but again, I'll watch a bunch of the recap videos later. As far as the Raptors or Warriors, I got a feeling Warriors tie it up tonight. Uh, I think the Warriors tied. I think they go back to Golden State tied 1-1. I'm still predicting Raptors in seven. And maybe that's just me being, a, a, you know, home boyering a lot, I, I guess, because it's the Raptors. But I'm still picking Raptors in seven. But I think Golden State ties it up tonight. Uh, Snake Jerusalem writes, does AE still ha have 75 million left to beat Avatar? Oh, I guess you're talking about Avengers Endgame. P guys, please don't use acronyms. Um, yes, I still think it can catch Avatar. You know, it's funny. I was saying for the longest time, look, it's possible Endgame could catch Avatar, but I really doubt it will. This is before the movie opened. This is before the movie opened. I said, I think everybody underestimates how big 2.7 something million dollars, billion dollars is. I think that people, can, but then it opened to 357 million. That was new information. And then even I, who have said forever Guys, Endgame's going to be massive, but it ain't catching Avatar. Even I, after the opening weekend, went, wow, I, uh, hey, I, I guess it is. I guess it is going to catch Avatar. I mean, that big of an opening, it was almost a $2 billion opening in its first week. I mean, it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I see it. I, I still was, I was still dubious of the $3 billion mark, because uh, <clears throat> that's a hell of a lot of money. But I mean, like we said before, guys, I mean, like people have been asking me, John, how could how could Endgame start so strong and now tail off so quickly? It's like, guys, look, more and more people are going to see these things opening weekend. How many of you guys wrote into me and say, John, I saw it three times opening weekend, which is great. But it means a lot of people got it out of their system in its first week. These event films, more it's not just Avengers. These big event films, more and more people, and it's for the whole movie industry, movies are becoming much more front-loaded. People are going earlier and earlier. More and more people are going to go see their movies opening weekend than ever before. So we're seeing things slow down at a faster rate. Endgame, everybody saw it opening week. Everybody went to go see it. Very few people waited till week two or week three. And a lot of people saw it multiple times opening week. So we shouldn't be all that surprised if it doesn't. And I still think it will. But like we said a long time ago, even after the opening weekend, it'll barely beat the record. It'll just crawl over that line. But I still think it will. And yes, I still think it has $75 million in it. But it's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. So we'll have to wait and see. All right. Uh, let's see. Dante Redgrave writes, uh, whole second here was it? Well, I double checked it. Dante, Dante Redgrave writes, where is he? 
There he is. Uh, hey, John, found a Harkins Theater in Cerritos, 20 miles south of L.A., that does do childcare. So cool. Never thought this would actually be a thing, did you? No. Actually, for the longest time, like I've said, look, <clears throat> child care at theaters is a great idea, but I don't think you can do it. You have to have the floor space for it, and floor space is at a premium in movie theaters. So it's hard to get the floor space. Then you're a lawsuit waiting to happen. Like looking after, all you need is little Billy to fall down and get a bleeding nose, and suddenly you're getting sued by mama. And it doesn't matter if you sign a waiver, people can still sue you. So it's a headache, it takes up floor space, it's expensive to do, and you're just lawsuits waiting to happen. But then when I talked about that on a show once a, a long time ago, a bunch of people started writing in saying, actually, John, there are a few theaters that do childcare. I'm like, you're kidding. So I'm not shocked to hear it. But if I was a movie theater owner, while childcare is a brilliant idea, I just don't know that I would do it because of all the, the headache that goes along with doing it. But I'd be curious to talk to some management from that Harkins Theater and say, does it work for you? Do you find more parents are coming to the movies knowing they can drop off their kid in childcare for two hours? Because if you can find the way to crack that code and make it work, it's a great idea that every movie theater should do. If you can make it work, that is. So I don't know. It's cool to hear that. We'll just we'll have to wait and see if it's actually sustainable, I guess. Okay. Uh, Anthony Monsters or Montez writes, uh, Welp, John, it looks like Endgame isn't going to hit three billion. Well, I've been saying that for a while. Darn, really like that movie. Such a shame. It'll end up being such a massive flop. Yeah. Again, hey, I told you guys. I told you. If if Endgame doesn't hit three billion, or for whatever reason it doesn't catch Avatar, despite the fact that it'll be the biggest movie we've had in ten years, despite the fact that it would be the number two biggest movie of all time, despite the fact that it shattered and obliterated opening weekend box office records, I told you, and you all knew this anyway. I wasn't telling you anything new, but I told you. You watch, the boo birds are gonna come out. You're gonna start hearing, oh, why did Avengers fail? Why did Avengers underperform? Underperform, you moron. And sure enough, as as Endgame started to slow down and started becoming apparent it wasn't gonna hit three billion, and some people are even questioning now whether it's gonna catch Avatar, you guys have seen it, right? The headlines. Why has Endgame failed to reach these milestones? Why has Endgame and I I told you this would happen, and it is ludicrous when we see it happen. All right, ZOMG Ruler writes, uh, Matt Hughes said, Battenson equals start of new reboot of DCEU. I haven't heard him say that. Um, now, of course, uh, Matt is over at Forbes. I, I'd be curious to read his article. I love reading his stuff. I, I'll have to read his article and see what he's saying, but I do not... Did he say that? I'm not sure he said that. And even if he did, you remember, he's not a studio rep. He's a reporter. So take it with a grain of salt. But I'd be very curious to read that article myself. Uh, Ryan Loner writes, we're all overlooking the obvious nickname, our bats. Oh, that's interesting because I've been wondering, so what do we call it? Do we call it Pattinson? Do we call the Pattinson Batman? Do we call him Patman or Battenson? Which one are we going with it? Patman or Battenson? That's a good one too, though, because a lot of people refer to, uh, to Robert Pattinson as our pats. Maybe we start calling him our bats. Maybe you're onto something, Ryan. Okay, <clears throat> James Bonner writes, Watching the original Highlander right now, love that movie, one of my top 10 favorite all-time films, has been my, almost my whole life. Um, watching the original Highlander right now, I forgot Queen, oh yeah, the, most of the songs in that movie are all Queen music. I am immortal. It's it's amazing, it's a great soundtrack to a great movie, James. Uh, the Crone Doggy writes, John Wick really made that one guy eat his words. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about what that means because the movie's still in theaters, maybe you haven't seen it yet, but you're absolutely right, Crone Doggy. I'm not gonna explain it, but you're absolutely right. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. Dom Al Barris writes, just finished The Sopranos, nice. Loved Barry season one. I agree on both. Yeah, Sopranos, great. Some people consider it to be the greatest TV show of all time, that and The Wire. Uh, and Barry season one was incredible. And I wasn't expecting much out of that. I'm just in the process now of starting to get through season two. Gotta admit, I'm not liking season two as much as season one so far. It's still good. It's still good. I'm just not into it as much as season one, but I'm only about two or three episodes in. Uh, but yeah, I love the first season. Absolutely loved it. Taki75 writes, Yinsen's last words sound momentous after Endgame. Yeah, they do. Somebody brought them up on last week's show as well, and they really are appropriate to it, Taki. Uh, James Bonner writes, yeah, 
but I shoot with, yeah, but I shoot with this hand. Blazing Saddles. Um, uh, this is this. Oh, yeah, your hand steadies rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. One of the great moments for one of the great comedies of all time. Uh, Joser Miaz writes, Keanu Reeves up for the role of Eternal Storm. I've heard about that. We'll, I'm, I've got a few tabs open for it right now. I'm sure that's going to be a topic we talk about a little bit more because I don't know much about it right now other than the fact that I've seen some headlines. We'll talk about that more on the John Campus Show tomorrow for sure. Uh, Luke1234 writes, Ack, 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 ack. Mars Attack. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm not a Mars Attacks fan. Didn't like Mars Attacks. Um, yeah, which puts me, I don't know if it, how many of you guys feel about it, but it puts me in the minority in my friends. <laughs> out of my friends, I'm in the minority, but I never did like Mars Attacks. Um, Lone Wolf X6, I flexed the wrong muscle. A lot of people quoting that. One of the great moments, I'm not going to say what happens in it, but one of the great moments of this season, the only season so far of Doom Patrol. You'll never forget that scene for the rest of your life. Uh, Edwin Arzola, Arzola writes, over under 65%, Patman is a prequel to Batflick. I'll go under on that. I'm going to take under. I think it's actually much under that. It's possible, for sure. I'm not saying 10%, but I'm going to take the under on that. Uh, the Hero writes, so many videos saying Deadpool joining the MCU is inevitable. I disagree. Uh, Feige said that they will change nothing. Is this clickbait culture or ignorance? Ah, no, it's It's neither. It's neither clickbait nor ignorance. If somebody has the opinion that they believe that that's going to happen, it is neither ignorance, it's just a different opinion, nor is it clickbait. It's they're making a video talking about something they believe in. I disagree with them. I think there is clear evidence suggesting against it, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. Look, I, I think Bob Iger, Kevin Feige made it very clear. Particularly, like, these people, whoever saying this stuff was not at CinemaCon, clearly. Because they made it pretty clear at CinemaCon, Deadpool is staying at Fox. Fox is going to make Deadpool movies. Bob Iger has said they will not be, Deadpool will not be under the, the Marvel banner. It will not be in the MCU. So it's not going to happen. But that, we've heard things said by studio people before, and then it turns out different. So, while I believe... It's very obvious that Deadpool is not coming into the MCU. There is some, there's reason to believe that maybe it could. And there are people out there on YouTube who kind of believe that. And if that's what they believe, whether I agree with them or not, doesn't matter. If that's what they believe, then it's not ignorance to make a video, nor is it clickbait to make a video expressing that you think this is going to happen. There's nothing wrong with that. I disagree, but that's the great thing about being movie fans. We'll all have different opinions and we can disagree. So I got to say, Hero, I, I think it is neither ignorance nor is it clickbait. It's just them. They have an opinion that I disagree with, and that's okay. And so they're making videos about it. Perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. All right. <clears throat> Patrick Conway writes, Pity Star-Lord didn't reunite with his grandfather during the celebration moment in Tony's speech with T'Challa, Scott, Hope, and Clint were there. You're probably saying were there with family. Um, Yeah, that's true. Of course, the guy who played, I keep forgetting the actor's name, but the guy who played uh, Peter's grandfather, who only appears in the first few minutes of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, he was also in James Gunn's Slither. He plays the town's mayor in Slither. He's awesome in that. They could have had him there too, but that guy never met Tony. Um, nor did he have any... I mean, for, he doesn't even know his grandson's still alive. By the way, we don't even know his grandfather would still be alive at all. So it, it wouldn't have made any sense for him to be there. I don't think it would have made any sense for him to be there. Because that was a funeral. That's not a time for a family reunion. Um, whereas Clint was there, so he brought his wife and kids with him because that guy saved their world. Um, Hope is there because she fought alongside Iron Man in the battle uh, to save the world. So, and of course, um, uh, of course, uh, Hank, Hank Pym, he knows Tony, and he knew Tony's father very well, so it would be appropriate that he would be there. I, I don't see there being any reason, by, because also, again, like I said before, we don't even know that his grandfather even knows he's alive. So I, I, I think that would have confused some people, so I'm okay with it. 
Uh, Lone Wolf X6 writes, love the relationship between Cliff and Crazy Jane. So do I. It's one of my, it probably is my favorite thing about, amongst all the things I love about uh, Doom Patrol, I really do like that relationship. That relationship to me is great. Uh, which characters would you say had the best relationship on Doom? Oh yeah, I know, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think Cliff and Crazy, although the relationship between, um, oh God, why am I freezing on the name? Between Larry, he's the guy with the negative spirit, and Rita. The relationship between Larry and Rita is really cool too. They've got a great like sibling kind of relationship that I really dig. I think that's great too. But I, I love all the dynamics on that show. Uh, Ryan Loner writes, Swamp Thing is into body horror as much as Doom Patrol is into dirty jokes and I'm so down with that. I still haven't watched Doom or um, uh, Swamp Thing. I am excited about it. I'm hearing fantastic things about it. So I'm, I'm looking to get on that pretty quick here. Colby Harris writes, I saw Aladdin last night and I loved it. I love the song, Speechless. It's a good song. Uh, the Genie was great and I actually like Jafar. I'm having some jams now. See, here's the thing. Oh boy, the whole scene with jams, I won't give anything away. There's a whole scene revolving around jams that I thought was hilarious. Both people who liked and didn't like Aladdin all agree Will Smith was great as a genie. And that was a lot of people's big worries, but Will Smith is great. Uh, Equally, it seems like a lot of people who like and didn't like Aladdin all agree that they didn't really like Jafar. I did. I thought that Jafar worked really well. But anyway, Aladdin is delightful, far better than it had any business being. And uh, I had a really good time watching. I've already seen it a couple times. I'll probably watch it one more while it's in theaters. All right. Tony Hurd sends in a really generous super chat. Thank you, Tony, for supporting the channel on that level, man. I appreciate that. Um, theory. There's a multiverse in the MCU and they're separate and doing their own thing. Then nine or 10 years later, an event happens that brings them together. And once it's over, they go back to their worlds. Is that too convoluted? It's not necessarily that part. Look, the whole idea of multiverse, I'm, I'm well on the record of this, is absolutely idiotic. The whole idea, of, I, I think, is the stupidest thing the MCU has done so far, introducing multiverse into their stuff. Uh, I don't think it works in the comics. I don't think it works in movies and television. I think it's lazy story writing, particularly like time travel is totally the bottom of the barrel, lazy man's writing. I think multiverse is terrible, but that's not to say <clears throat> that there haven't been instances where multiverse stuff has been used where it was great, just like time travel. I think time travel is stupid in movies and TV show, but there are some TV shows and movies that have used it and used it to great effect. Uh, and I, MCU can do that. I do believe, I've said this before, I believe they will close off this whole multiverse loop at some point. That might become the next big thing. The whole mission and endeavor to close down the multiverse and just bring everything back in, in the MCU into one universe and stop being so dumb and convoluted. Um I think they will do that. And I don't think it's going to take nine to 10 years. Now, I, I am this is no insider information. Nobody at Marvel's told me this. This is just pure fan speculating on my part. That's all it is. Pure fan speculating. Um, but yeah, my fan speculation is I think they're going to close this thing off at some point. <laughs> and that might be their next big thing, Tony. It just might be. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Tony Hurd writes, Endgame made more money domestically than 95% of movies make worldwide. What a failure. I know, right? Endgame, by the way, as of right now, uh, I mean, it's a foregone conclusion. It is not catching uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Okay, that's just, a, it's done. Okay, there's, there's no more mystery about it. Endgame is not going to catch Star Wars The Force Awakens domestic box office record. It's just not going to get there. Right now, it sits at $815 million domestically, which would, on its own, make it a huge worldwide hit. So I, I just don't get anybody trying to spin anything. I mean, if you want to see, you want a telltale sign that somebody's really desperate to do something, look for anybody trying to spin Endgame's box office results in any kind of a negative light. In any kind of a negative light. There's just no rational, sane way to look at any of the box office results from Avengers Endgames in any way negatively. It's just, you it just don't, okay? Just don't. Uh, ben Rayner writes, I flex, the, another person, I flex the wrong muscle. Amazing scene that I will remember and talk about probably for the rest of my life. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, Nirvana Parasu writes, Am I the only person who isn't excited about Marvel Disney Plus shows, especially after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Well, remember, this is going to be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a completely different thing. 
Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had nothing to do with Kevin Feige nor his creative team. That was a totally different group of people. The shows that are going to be on Disney Plus are under Kevin Feige's purview and his creative team. And he's shepherding those things. So do not worry about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That was a totally different network, totally different people operating it, and it was completely outside of Kevin Feige's influence. Kevin Feige has nothing to do with that, which is part of the reason why it's such a bad show. I know a lot of you guys like it. I, 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 I don't like the show, but whatever. So do not worry at all about that. It's a completely different group of people making that thing. So... Put that aside. Now, that doesn't mean you you have to be excited about the Disney Plus shows. I'm just saying, don't let that one thing be any part of your worrying process. Like, oh my God, the the Inhumans were so bad, and Agents of Shield I don't like, and but don't even worry about it. It's not the same people making it, so put that aside. All right, Pelican Mike writes, John, are you going to watch Punisher season two? I know, right? I still have not watched Punisher season two. I don't know if news of its cancellation flipped a switch in my head i just don't feel i i love punisher season one love punisher season one i do not know why i haven't gotten around to punisher season two yet i don't know why i love the first season i yes i am i'm definitely going to do it uh laugh warehouse writes couldn't brand just pardon john after all he is king ah but if he did that one of his very first acts of being king is to break his 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 word to the unsullied he gave his word to the unsullied which is the only way the unsullied were gonna if they if he did not condemn john they would have started this new world with a civil war so he gave his word could he do it because he's king absolutely he can but is brand the broken gonna start his rule by being a liar is he gonna start his rule by uh by breaking his oath and I, I don't think he would do that so no that's not really an option dan ketchum writes young batman but older wonder woman question mark continuity schmontinuity again i we don't know we're just gonna have to see what it is that matt reeves and walter mata have in mind for batman at this point they could be doing some soft rebooting they could be doing a hard reboot it could be an elseworlds kind of thing right now we just don't have a clear picture yet so let's not try to jump to any conclusions yet and let's see where it is they're going but maybe they are going to adopt the old fox continuity schmontinuity thing it worked for fox so maybe it would work for them uh leo milmet writes just became a patreon thank you so much leo appreciate that man what happened to best movie worst movie love that podcast will it a uh, return for everyone for patreons or not at all oh it's it's still on we're still we're there are going to be 10 episodes i think we're six episodes in right now um anyway they're going to be 10 episodes for season one then we're going to take a break for like half a year or whatever but the problem is we and it's only been a couple of weeks since the last episode went up anyway we got the last episode uh all our pre-recorded ones are done we haven't recorded any more yet part of the problem is we have to coordinate schedules because it's me it's robert and it's cody miller and Cody Miller, of course, lives in Indiana, and he is a competitive swimmer, and he's been doing events and training and all that kind of stuff. So we've got to be able to coordinate the schedule for all three of us. But yes, there are at least four more episodes coming to complete out season one, uh, probably in the next week or two. It's not going to be much longer, and it's for everybody. It's open on the podcast channel. So uh, hang tight. It will be coming. All right. And again, Leo, thank you for becoming a Patreon member. Uh, David Tapia writes, Keanu was hilarious and always be my maybe. I haven't watched it yet. But I, but the, just when I saw him in the trailer, he looked hilarious just in the trailer, David. I cannot wait to watch it. Probably later tonight. Uh, Dylan Trost writes, what is your favorite season of Game of Thrones? Last season, season seven. Uh, season seven was my favorite. I, I, I just thought it was awesome. I just thought last season of Game of Thrones. I thought this season was great too, by the way. Uh, but yes, last season was my favorite season. Uh, Nirvana writes, Sonic fans are happy that it's getting a redesign, but what, what everything else is bad in movie now we have a bad movie with a with faithful design sorry for rant by the way there's no such thing as a faithful design i th i looked at that sonic the hedgehog it looked like sonic the hedgehog i don't know what the people are expecting it's gonna look dumb it's gonna look dumb um because it's a dumb looking character it's gonna look dumb anybody who thinks that a, a redesign of the characters in one little bit gonna make this movie any better is crazy this movie is still going to be good if it was going to be good. It's still going to be bad if it was going to be bad. But I get it. A lot of people didn't like the design. 
No harm in making it something that's a little bit more crowd pleasing. That's cool. I I'm not ditching on that. I'm not ditching on that. But don't fool yourself. Oh, Sonic looks better. Ha! Now this movie's going to be good. No, that's not how it works, folks. It's not how it works. Uh, Dylan Trost writes. Uh, was joining the 73 and 9 Warriors a weak move for KD? Um, that, by the way, he's talking about Kevin Durant. Guys, please don't use abbreviations. Anyway, you know, here's the thing. A player becomes a free agent. They get to go to whatever team they want for whatever reasons they want. Look, does Kevin Durant get less rights just because he's an MVP? Like any other t any other player in the league can go and join the Warriors and nobody would blink at it. If you're an okay player and you sign with the Warriors, nobody would say you're weak. Nobody would say you're doing something bad. So why does Kevin Durant get punished for, ma for making the same choices other players make just because he's an MVP talent? Does being that good mean you get punished by not having the ability to do what you want and go to join whatever team you want? What's wrong with that? You know, he was he played, he was very frustrated. He had he had a fantastic team in OKC. Played great, but they were never able to crack the code and win a championship. So now here's Kevin Durant who's like Okay, I'm now free to go to any team I want. Golden State really wants me. They're offering me good money. I have a chance to do what I couldn't do with the tools I had in that other city, but I'll have the tools to win championships in this city. Okay, I'm going to choose to go there. I don't think it was a weak move. Well, champions, but don't give me that BS, okay? Don't give me that BS. If you're a champion... And you cannot win because remember, this is the NBA is not a, t a solo, is not a solo performance. One great player cannot. I don't care how good you are, you cannot win a championship by yourself. Jordan never won a championship by himself. He played with other Hall of Fame players. Magic Johnson played with a Hall of Fame lineup. Kobe Bryant played with All Stars and Hall of Famers. All right. LeBron James won his title. I mean, LeBron James even won a title when he was on a team that didn't even deserve to be in the playoffs. Uh, but nobody can win a championship alone. He was in a city where he never felt a, a good enough team would be assembled around him to win a championship. So we went to it. He did. He, he played out his contracts. He was very good to the city of Oklahoma. He was great when he played there. And so we want to, now I'm not a fan of the Golden State Warriors. And I'm saying, no, it was not weak on his part. He had the opportunity to go to a team, to play on a team that he thought would, would build a championship caliber team. And he could win titles. So no, I didn't think it was I don't think it was a weak move on his part. I didn't like it at the time. Because the Golden State Warriors were already the best team in the league. I didn't like it at the time, but hey man, no, I want to go somewhere where I'll lose. I I no, it wasn't weak. He should have every bit of a right to go wherever he wants to go, just like any other NBA player does. We don't accuse other players of being weak because they went to a championship team. Why do we punish elite level players? Oh, you're really talented, so therefore you shouldn't have the same ability that other players have. I, I just I just don't understand that. I don't understand that. So no, I'm totally good with it. I don't like it, but I'm totally good with it. I get it. <clears throat> All right. Sean Blue writes, uh, have you seen the new Death uh, Stranding trailer with Mads Mikkelsen, Norman Reddus, Guillermo del Toro, and Nicholas uh, uh, Winding Ruffin? I did watch a bit of it. I, it looked like a video game. I, honestly, that's all I can say. I, I wasn't... Okay, it's a video game. It's got some really cool people attached to it. Had a little bit of a Last of Us feel to it, to be honest with you. The whole kind of post-apocalyptic world is a very big thing. And I, I know everybody's buzzing, but I'm like, I don't know. If it was the exact same trailer without these really famous names, would everybody still be talking about I don't know. I, I Yeah, again, I haven't played the game, obviously, but I, I didn't think there was anything necessarily all that special about the trailer. Just being honest, that's how I felt about it. All right, K Major writes, 
Um, something I hate, what sequels do is kill off entire stories slash characters from previous movies. Yeah. Kingsman didn't even get a chance to show you that world before offing everyone. Does that bug you? Um, yeah. One of the worst examples of that ever in history was Iron Eagle 2. Where Iron Eagle is this whole movie about this kid and Lou Gossett Jr. was a supporting character. But this whole movie is about this kid and wanting to see, using fighter jets and saving his dad. And the whole movie is built around that. What do you do in Iron Eagle 2? First five minutes, kill off the main character from the previous movie and build this now around the supporting character. Um, kind of dumb. Kind of dumb. And it really did. I did. Look, there's a lot of things I don't like Kingsman 2. I think Kingsman 2 is a bad film. I think it's a bad movie. I love the first Kingsman. Kingsman 2 is a bad movie, in my opinion. But one of the things, amongst many things they do in that movie that I think were bad, was the fact that they really, this whole movie is about Kingsman discovering that world and blah, 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 blah. And we're learning all about, oh, yeah, yeah, Kingsman 2 killed them all. First 10 minutes. I'm like, really? I, I, I get it. That's what you wanted to do for your story because you wanted an excuse to get these guys out to the American branch. But... Uh, I, yeah, I didn't like... I, I, so I'm with you, K-Major. I do not like that. Look, if it's something that's been around for a long time, let's say you had like five Kingsman movies and then you wipe out the London branch of the Kingsman. Okay, fine. But yeah, I, I'm with you, K-Major. That is something that I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of that. All right, final question today. This was the last one that got was able to get sent in before before YouTube conked out. Uh, Lone Wolf X6 writes, John, favorite Doom Patrol episode for me, uh, it's Cliff Goes to the Underground. If, if you're talking about the episode, I can't remember the names of the episode. If you're talking about the, uh, uh, the episode when he goes into um, Jane's mind, that is a great episode. Absolutely, that's a great episode. But I'll tell you what my favorite episode was. It's the one where he fights the alligator. Uh, and I don't want to give anything away about the episode for those who haven't seen the show, but it's the one with the alligator. That's actually my favorite episode for several different reasons on several different levels. But I can't think of a single episode. I think there's 10, I think it's either 10 or 12 episodes, whatever. I can't think of a single one I didn't really love. I, I love them all, but yes, Cliff Goes to Underground, that was a really good one. Uh, but I again, my favorite is the one with the alligator, so that's me. All right, guys. That will do it for this installment of Open Mic. Gotten through all the questions that got sent in before YouTube went belly up. Thank you guys for doing that. And again, my apologies, guys, that today's Open Mic was not live. It was beyond my control. As of this moment, I'm still checking and it is still not working properly. YouTube is still, as of this moment, not working properly. So who knows? I'm not even sure where I'm going to be able to upload this video because I can't upload anything right now. YouTube is still having problems. I mean, you can still watch videos on YouTube right now, but creators aren't able to go live. At least a bunch of creators aren't able to go live or upload new videos. So hopefully I'll be able to upload this video sometime today. All right, guys, don't forget, the John Campion Show returns tomorrow. Me, Robert Meyer Burnett, and I believe Ashley Whalen should be back now. She, she was gone on vacation for a bit, and then she was back, but she had commercials to shoot. So she hasn't been on for over a week. She should be back tomorrow as well. We're going to talk about the Keanu Reeves you know, casting rumors. We're going to talk about Godzilla's results. We're going to talk about the stuff about what's going on with Batman, all that stuff and more on tomorrow's John Campy show. Make sure you guys come on down and join us. That is, of course, as long as YouTube is back up and running by then. All right, guys, that will do it for me. Thanks a lot for being here. My name is John Campia, and until next time, bye-bye.